Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, as always, to Bishop Eaton, to our monastery here in Liverpool. Um, I, as usual, would like to share a Thursday message with you. It's rather a, a miserable, dank day out there. We've had a few of these during May, have we not? Um, particularly last Saturday, when we wanted a nice sunny day for our special liturgy down at St. Mary's at 12 o'clock, and it poured with rain, but 21 hardy souls were there, and uh, we braved it, and, and it was lovely. And hopefully this coming Saturday, as we continue to celebrate the great gift to the Church of Laudato Si, that encyclical of Pope Francis, and we have another liturgy this Saturday at 12, so hopefully the weather will be better, a few more of you will be able to come, maybe even some of the children um, and hopefully, again, we can set eyes on one another. Uh, some of us have been seeing one another at Mass recently, but so many we haven't been able to meet up with for a long time. Anyway, gradually things are being lifted, and hopefully in the coming weeks uh, life will return to something closer to what we regard as normality. But what I did want to share by way of a reflection with you today is part of today's Gospel. Uh, we've been listening to this Last Supper discourse of St. John's constantly through the Easter season as we lead up to Pentecost this coming weekend. And of course, in the last few days, we've been listening to the priestly prayer of Jesus that ends the Last Supper discourse when he has that conversation with the apostles. And we hear him praying to the Father, and we hear him praying for us. And it always reminds me of Pope John the Twenty-Third. I, as a, as a young teenager, still remember the impact he made on the church, and particularly his focus on this passage. So let me just read part of it to you, and then we'll come back to that. Jesus is praying to the Father in these words, I pray not only for these, but also for those who through their teaching will come to believe in me. May they all be one. Just as, Father, you are in me and I am in you, so that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe it was you who sent me. Do you know that passage opened up a whole new way of thinking in the Catholic Church at the time? Pope John XXIII was encouraging us to get into that ecumenical dialogue with the other Christian communities. And we did with real determination. I know we've had our ups and downs since then, but I still feel there's a, a great urgency about this. And, and I, as you know, I find it wonderful that now week by week, it's just become part of my regular timetable that I pray uh, with the clergy down from Woolton there. The, um, it's, it's, it's just excellent support. And I think uh, it was wonderful last Saturday to see Julia there who, who is uh, assisting Kip uh, in the uh, ministry at St. Peter's. Um, and also uh, Louise from the Salvation Army was there. I know Louise is having a, a break this week with her family, but it was wonderful that they braved the rain and, and stayed with there and prayed with us, uh, stayed there with us and prayed with us last Saturday. So thank you to them and thank you to all of you who, who managed it. And this, uh, this focus on our oneness and our unity is, is so important. The ecumenical dialogue, of course, is not just to be amongst the Christian community, but Pope Francis keeps reminding us we must dialogue with the whole world and get that sense of interconnectedness, uh, not just between people, but with the whole of creation. That's what the Laudato Si is reminding us of. Um, and I love this concept. I, I, as you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great fan of Pierre Tard de Chardin, the great French Jesuit, who had this great sense of, of the wonder of the whole of the universe and, and the mystery of it all and the enormity of it all. And I think once we get caught up in that, we, we begin naturally to pray. We don't have to necessarily find the words, we just have to get that sense of being united, of being attached. So that's my thought for today, and, and it, of course, explains why we do pray for one another, why it's so important that we are aware, as far as we can be, of, of one another's needs and of where we're going. So I would like to share with you a few more prayer intentions. Um, some of these have only come in recently, so I'm not going to go through all the ones that we've been placing, and as you know, they're all here uh, beneath the altar, and uh, we will continue this uh, tradition that we've built up now because of the pandemic. But just in the last few days, I've heard that uh, Florence Clark has had a serious stroke. Uh, Veronica Drury let me know about that, so we're praying for Florence. I don't know whether she'll be able to pick this message up at the moment, because I know she's still in hospital. 
Uh, John Mullins's daughter, Colette, her sister was telling me that um, she's really suffering an awful lot at the moment. I think she needs a couple of hip replacements and is in great deal of pain. So Colette, we're, we haven't forgotten you, we're praying for you and hope our Lord will ease the pain and that you can get some relief soon. And then really, uh, sadly, but it's, it, fortunately it doesn't look as if it's too serious, but I came back from Mass at St Mary's at lunchtime today and there was that wonderful character, Christopher Allman, uh, another of these great characters of the parish, uh, getting on in years now, well into his 80s, if not getting towards the end of his 80s, I think. Um, uh, used to look after the sacristy here at, at, at the lunchtime mass uh, on, on various days of the week and uh, on a Sunday. Um, Christopher had thought there was mass here at 12, apparently had been dropped off, but as he was walking uh, to the church, he, he fell. And um, a lot of people came to his aid, I gather, passers-by. And then um, from the monastery, he came in. And by the time I got back, he was uh, comfortably in a wheelchair, having been looked after by our nurse, Philip Sargent. Um, and the ambulance had been called. And eventually, uh, just after lunch, he, he was taken down to the Royal just to be checked over. But they didn't seem to think they'd have to keep him in. So we do, we're praying for you, uh, Christopher. We're praying for your wife, Bernadette, and all the family. Um, I know Bernadette's struggling a bit these days too with the old memory and so on. But, so we do keep you very much in our prayers. And, uh, but it was delightful to see him again and to have a good chat with you, Christopher. He was, he was in great form in spite of the fall. Um, I also, just before I came up to record this message, I noticed on, on my computer a message from... Suzanne Daly. Uh, I'll just read it to you. She says, my boy Jonah, whom you know, is being treated in Alder Hay Hospital after being diagnosed last week with cancer. He is ventilated in the uh, intensive care unit to keep him safe whilst we tackle some airway restrictions. Uh, obviously, they're broken hearted uh, at this news, and um, but he's very strong and uh, we're praying for his recovery and we'll join you Suzanne and James um, in that prayer for Jonah and there are so many other intentions I know um, that will be in your minds and hearts again in terms of deaths um, Pat, Pat Cole told us that his brother John had died um, back on the, on the 17th uh, which was not long ago, as you know. In fact, just last last Monday, it was during the funeral that we were having here for Rosemary uh, that uh, apparently his brother died. Over there in Churchview, where Father Tony Hunt and, and Father Jimmy Smale are, I'll mention them in just a moment. Um, and also we've heard that uh, Vivian Stratulis, whom we've been praying for, uh, has died. So we entrust all those who have asked our prayers, who are in need of our prayers, asking eternal rest for those who died, and comfort and strength and healing for those who are suffering. Um, I mentioned Father Jimmy Smale there, Father Tony Hunt. I, I saw them yesterday, I spent quite a while with them. Uh, we had some excellent uh, chats. Uh, I must say, they've both been wonderfully looked after. They looked really in, in good form. Um, Jimmy Smale is going to come back here on Monday because we do have some good news that after lots of negotiations with social services and so on, we do have an agency now who've uh, agreed to take on the care of the community uh, and uh, those who've been earmarked for care will get a visit uh, morning and evening and Jimmy Smale I think four times a day. Um, we still need a, a full medical report on, on Tony Hunt. Obviously, he's quite a number of underlying health problems, and uh, it would be wonderful if, if they can get him well enough to come back. We'd love to see him back, and I know his family would, and I know he would. Um, if it's not possible, then I'm hoping to be able to negotiate that he can go. Uh, they've been wonderful uh, for him and with him at Church View, but um, to get him somewhere where there's a chapel and where he can receive the sacraments. So we're looking at that. And uh, so I could say a prayer that all these things will uh, finally come together. But we do appreciate uh, your love and your support and your prayers. And so let's join all those together now and ask our Lord's blessing on our homes, on our families, on all those whom we've brought attention to today. Lord, you know us, you know our needs, you love us. You've prepared a place for us. 
we ask you to continue to bless and strengthen us in every way. And I ask your blessing to reach out on all those who share this message and on our two parishes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And can I just end by saying a huge thank you to those of you who came along. It was a, a wonderful congregation on Monday. I know that Anne-Marie was uh, really deeply touched by the support she got at the funeral of Rosemary. Um, and Anne-Marie hopefully will continue to feel that love surrounding her as she continues her journey through life with us. Um, she's still very much going to be part of, of this community and supporting us in all sorts of different ways, and we'll try and support her too. It's a great uh, sign, I think, to me, and I'm sure to you, of the concern and the care in both our parishes. God bless you all.